Oh, hi everyone, and welcome to Board to Be Wild, a segment meant to review any game that's not online. We're talking about the real hardware. Before all you youngins invented your video games, there was board games. We're talking dice, we're talking tiles, and of course, we're talking boards. For this special Halloween episode, I'm going to take a look at one of my favorite cooperative and spooky games, Betrayal in the House on a Hill. Betrayal at the House on the Hill is a strategic tabletop game for three to six players and takes a little over an hour to play. Before you get into it, you and your fellow players must decide on which characters you want to play as. There are 12 different characters you can choose to play as, each with different abilities. These abilities are speed, might, sanity, and knowledge. The numbers associated with your skill corresponds to the number of dice you are able to roll while performing a task. Dice are a little different as each individual dice cannot roll above a 2. The player whose birthday is closest to the actual date goes first. At this point the party has entered the first phase of the game, Exploration. Each player will take turns moving their character and as they enter a doorway they will draw the top tile from a stack of room tiles and place it in a manner that connects to the room. The house on the hill has three levels and certain tiles will be restricted to certain levels. The tile you draw will affect what happens next. In one of the corners of the tile there will be at least one of three symbols. The first symbol is a swirl. This is your cue to draw a card from the event stack. The player must read the event out loud and react accordingly with the necessary rolls. The second possible symbol is a bull skull. This allows you to draw an item that could have game altering effects later on. The final symbol is a crow. This means you must draw an omen card. At first, omen cards act like event cards. You read the card and react accordingly. However, after the omen card has been read, the player must make a haunt roll. If the player does not roll above the total number of omens revealed on the board, then the second phase of the game begins, the haunting. When the haunting begins, you will need to consult the rule books to see which one of 50 possible scenarios you will be playing. Each scenario has different rules, but most scenarios will divide the table into two groups, the traders and the survivors. Each roll will have different win conditions for the rest of the game, and will be working against each other to win. The haunting phase is really when characters become in danger of dying. If any character's stat drops too low, they will die. It really does become a team effort to survive. I would also like to mention that there are a few scenarios where the traitor remains a secret for the haunting phase. Overall, this game is very fun, and where it shines is its replayability. 12 character options, countless manner configurations, and 50 haunting scenarios ensure that you will never play the same game twice. I will also say in my experience, the survivors have it very rough. The biggest hurdle in this game is the volume of different rules it can have. Whenever you play this game, chances are you will have to learn new rules. Onboarding new players is hard, but once they are on board, it is always a lot of fun. Ultimately, if you are looking for a spooky game to add to your collection this Halloween, this is the perfect game for you. Well, that concludes our review. What do you think? Can you survive this haunted game? If so, make sure to tweet me at ZTV Goofing Off using the hashtag BoredToBeWild, and I'll see you around.